For some reason, people just love to have wrestlers do cameo appearances on TV. Whether the business is super popular or going through one of its more quiet periods, there's just something about having a pro wrestler pop up for a guest spot that gets you excited. I guess it's because they're not supposed to be there. Their home is the squared circle, so seeing them in a somewhat real environment is strange and cool. Well, as long as said appearance is good. That's the real issue here. Far more often than not, when this happens, the end result is just nuts. We're not talking about The Rock on Saturday Night Live or Triple H on The Drew Carey Show. We're talking about, well, you'll see. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is the 10 most bizarre cameos by wrestlers on TV. Number 10, Booker T and Scott Steiner on Charm. Charmed, in case you don't know, is a show about witches who use their powers to fight evil. It was cheesy, made for teenagers, and was clearly influenced by Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It never reached the level that did, but it still did alright for itself, especially when it came to being ridiculous. That's why on one episode, Booker T and Scott Steiner turned up and pretended they were falling into the depths of hell that happened to be located underneath a wrestling ring, because why wouldn't it be? It gets weirder from there, because this is the catalyst for our witch heroes to start fighting demonic wrestlers to save their friend. Buff Bagwell even turns up at one point and the three WCW stalwarts then spend most of their time suplexing ladies. It's top stuff, this. 9. Sting on Walker, Texas Ranger Walker, Texas Ranger was a show where Chuck Norris cowboy kicked people for an hour. That was it. He knew karate, so he used it as and where he could. It had a lot of wrestlers popping up over the years, including Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, but the one that will always stand front and center is when Sting had his turn. For starters, he was called Grangus. What? That sounds like a disease. Worse than that, his character seemed to be half bored man and then half surfer gimmick Sting. It was frankly awful. Just to ruin it further, for some reason during the final edit, someone added a bunch of awful sound effects that made it sound like you're watching a comedy show. And Norris no sold Sting Scorpion Death Drop. What a waste of time. Number eight. The Undertaker on Poltergeist The Legacy The Undertaker was a demon on Poltergeist, which sounds like it should be perfect. I mean, that's basically what The Undertaker is. He's the walking undead, which is pretty demonic, really. As you should have known by now, though, this wasn't good. Mostly because the episode makes no sense whatsoever. Using Ministry of Darkness Taker, he plays a soul chaser whose job is to collect final payments on deals made with the devil. He's made out to have magical powers, including self-regeneration and teleportation, and yet spends most of his time on screen clotheslining people to achieve his goals. He then had to stab these individuals in the heart with a mystical tree branch. The real question is, did Mark Calloway want to do this or was it a WWE decision? Either way, it wasn't the best. Number seven, Goldberg and Kevin Nash on Love Boat The Next Wave. Want a moment in time where kayfabe took a boot to the groin? Then look no further than when Goldberg and Kevin Nash appeared on Love Boat The Next Wave. Now, not only was this an awful show, much like Saved by the Bell The New Class wasn't a patch on the original, but it came in the middle of a feud they were having on WCW TV. And then here they were engaging in slapstick with each other. Bad slapstick at that. Proving that pro wrestlers are only ever seen that way, the pair played tag teaming pro wrestlers, one of which has crashed the other's honeymoon. They then have a rubbish wrestling fight. It helped absolutely nothing and probably convinced non-WCW fans to never tune in. Ever. Number 6. Roddy Piper on Robocop the series Straight off the bat, people shouldn't be messing around with Robocop. Secondly, Roddy Piper should have never agreed to come on this show. While Piper did get to appear in some pretty big roles, he also starred in some awful ones. It didn't help that Robocop the TV show was aimed at kids, but it was. And that's why Piper was asked to play Commander Cash, someone who thought they were a cartoon superhero that's just come to life. He was basically playing a stereotypical WWE babyface. The twist, however, is that Cash is actually a figurehead for an evil corporation, even though he has no idea himself. In fact, it is Robocop who discovers the truth thanks to a free gift that comes in the Commander's new breakfast cereal. This is riveting, right? Given that Piper had to wear a mask for most of the episode, he overacts more than Dolph Ziggler. And it just wasn't anything to write home about. I wouldn't go out of your way to watch it. Number 5. Shawn Michaels on Baywatch Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid on Baywatch, acting alongside David Hasselhoff and Pam Anderson. That just makes sense. Unfortunately, that didn't translate to the screen. Given the role of a mafia goon, his whole purpose for being alive is to terrorize some old lady. I'm deadly serious too. That is the situation he was put in. It was an awful idea made even worse by the fact that Michaels is just not good at all. It honestly seems like he just didn't want to be there. It was a waste of time, a waste of talent, and just a waste. I'm also pretty sure that apart from me right now, no one else is talking about this. There's literally no need. Number four, Brutus Beefcake on Thunder in Paradise. 
Thunder in Paradise is already an absolute mess of a show. Hulk Hogan's big push to become a celebrity outside of pro wrestling it is so strange from start to finish. Some of it genuinely doesn't make any sense. This did mean that Hogan had a lot of sway, which is why his friend of all friends, Brutus Beefcake, did appear in every episode. The thing is, he never really does anything. Like, he has no point actually being on screen. He's just hanging around in the background. He was only properly written into the series twice, which makes his whole guest spot just sad. He's only there because he's Hogan's mate, not because he needs to be there. Great work, Beefcake. Number three, The Rock on Hannah Montana. It's hard to criticize anything The Rock did outside of the WWE because look at him now. If that's the path he needed to take, then it was definitely the right path. He's the biggest movie star on the planet. But when he appeared on Hannah Montana alongside Miley Cyrus, well, it's just weird. The plot sees Hannah involved in a tabloid scandal that requires her to get a picture of The Rock. Furthermore, it's got to be embarrassing. And yes, Dwayne Johnson is playing the role as if he actually is the people's champ. The sole reason for this idea is so that the producers of the show can put makeup on The Rock and then have him move around like he's a drag queen. It's horribly awkward and a very bad idea. Don't watch it. Number two, various WCW stars on Baywatch. It wasn't only Shawn Michaels who found his way onto Baywatch, a lot of WCW stars made the trip too. This resulted in Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage racing each other on jet skis, Pam Anderson and Yasmin Bleeth giving Hogan's moustache CPR, Ric Flair threatening to close down a youth centre, and Vader blowing up a basketball. It wasn't too bad because ultimately, Baywatch was super cheesy and ridiculous. But the problems come where all this silliness was mixed in with a serious plot about skin cancer. And that's where things get uncomfortable, and that's where you're allowed to start questioning what the hell was going on. Number one, Triple H on Pacific Blue. The best part about Triple H's appearance on Pacific Blue is that he's wearing a DX t-shirt. So he's basically playing a version of himself. That's fine and all. Lots of WWE talent starred on the show because it aired on the same network as Raw. So why not cross brands? Well, the main reason is because it was awful to watch. While Triple H is fine beating up cops and cracking one-liners, in this episode, he's also playing an enforcer for a group of child pornographers. So here is Triple H, WWE superstar, beating up the good guys and defending some of the worst people on the planet while wearing his own merchandise. Do we need this? Like, seriously? Did we? And I think we did. You there, do you want to prove you're a wrestling smart ass? Then answer me this. Who was the first Alliance Invader to win a championship in the Invasion storyline? It was Mike Awesome. It was the Hardcore Championship. Did you get it? I don't care. To test yourself and whatever friends you might have, buy the new What Culture Wrestling trivia game available at shop.whatculture.com.